Okay. So uh, we have done a little bit uh, of the uh, history. Mm. Mm. I'm giving admit all, but why is not happening? Everyone is admitted. Nobody is waiting now. Okay. So, Clemens uh, is still trying we, to join, sir. Hello. Yes. Clemens is still trying to join. Uh, no matter. I have admitted everyone. Nobody is here. I think there is some problem in his internet connection. Sir. Okay. He will come then. Actually, tell me. Okay, friends. Uh, so we have just tried to trace the history uh, of evolution of the uh, of Bangladesh, you know, and uh, you can you can look into uh, you know different uh, uh, personalities, and you can evolve uh, that uh, how actually uh, South Asian countries have you know hovered around a dominant personality. And uh, you know, people have uh, uh, the. There are actually stories that why there have been a lot of uh, military personalities which have dominated, or sometimes there have been military rules. Why actually this has happened? Now, one of the reasons which have been explained by Minor Wien. Minor Wiener argues that actually it happened so because the colonial people did not try to develop the they they did not develop a democratic polity. They developed humongous bureaucracy. They developed humongous military and. Uh, they never tried to develop democratic leadership and polity. As and when a democratic leader start developing, they were booked and they were put behind the bar. And therefore, democratic polity could not develop in South Asia rather than a bureaucratic and military government always rule. So one of the reasons for domination of military personalities or dominant personalities in South Asian region is one. Now, if we look into one of the personalities. Hi, Pani Dabu. Hi, Pani Dabu. Okay. I have not put everyone. I have put everyone. Mitra, new. mute yourself. I think you. Oh mute. shit! Sorry. Oh. <laughs> you have to shit say only shit also on the. <laughs> this. this is all getting recorded. That's why it's very, very, very uh, dicey. Okay. So uh, what I'll do is that I we can look at least you know two three personalities to uh, acclimatize ourselves with Bangladeshi society because. Bangladeshi politics revolved and resolved around these four personalities. And these are charismatic personalities. One, of course, was Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who was the, who is considered father of the nation, Bang Bandhu, Bang Bandhu, B A N G, Bang B A N D H U, Bang Bandhu. A Bengali man, that's what Bang Bandhu, and uh, you know he was a Bangladesh's first president. He was educated at Calcutta for his higher education, joined Muslim League, but later left Muslim League and formed Amavi Awami League in 1949. And then the important aspect was that he started language movement from 19. 53 to 1966, he was leading the language movement that Bangla, Bangla should be a national language. And his party, Awami League, won the landslide victory in 1970 national parliamentary election. But, you know, Pakistan, uh, with his trick, actually, they 
wanted that no, that should be one unit policy, and that's why they did not give him. So Mujib was widely seen as Pakistani next PM. Now this was opposed vehemently by West Pakistan provinces, and this led to Bangladesh Liberation War in 1971. After the war, Mujib was, uh, you know, uh, he was, uh, uh, he, he assumed the state leadership and he became the president. Now in 1973, he has his election and his party gained huge victory and he became the prime minister again. But what he did, he shifted from prime ministerial to presidential form of the government. And uh, 1975, he declared second revolution and installed himself as Bangladesh's first autocratic leader. But he was claimed in, in uh, a coup and he was murdered. So this is one personality. I think if you read, I think you will get how uh, he has been so dominant figure. The second uh, personality is Sheikh Hasina Wazid, uh, his, his daughter, uh, his daughter was born in 1947, Sheikh Muzibur Rahman's daughter, and she survived the assassination of his father in 1975 because she was studying. It is said that she was studying in Delhi at that time. So there is a great connection of uh, uh, Sheikh Hasina Wazid in Delhi. And now she has been four times prime minister and she has been three times opposition leader from 1986 and the 1986, 1991 and 2001, she was opposition leader. And now she has become prime minister 2008, 2014, 2001 and 2018. So 2001, 2008 and 2014 and 18, four times. In 1981, she became the president of Ar Army League. And while she was living in exile in Delhi, in 1986, she became, uh, uh, she became the leader of the opposition. And in 1991 election, she uh, again returned to leader of the opposition. And in 1996, she became for the first time PM of Bangladesh. Now, however, uh, you know, she lost her election in 2001 and Khalida Zia was again the leader of the opposition. So I'm just trying to argue that look into this personality that how they have, you know, benefited. Now, 2007 uh, uh, is that she held again and she comes to power and in 2014, now, there are actually important, uh, uh, say, uh, say uh, important decisions which she has taken, one or two very important decisions which I want to just tell you so that it, she becomes uh, a little bit more formidable leader. Now, we can argue that she has been dominating Bangladesh politics for past 34 years out of 44 years of his existence in the politics. And two very important contributions Sheikh Hasina Wajid has made. One, she has granted autonomy to CHT, that is Chittagong Hill Track, where the Chakmas live in dominant section. She has given autonomy. Now, autonomy was not the part of Bangladeshi politics till Mujibur Rahman or uh, General Shah, autocratic you know, leaders were there. She has bought peace with Chakma Trick uh, uh, CHT people. And also, she has established Election Commission of India. Instead of, instead of actually holding elections in the interim government, you can see that she has developed. Now, very important aspect of ripening of democracy under her leadership 
with the development of election commission this is the second personality i think if you look into it will help you to understand better bangladesh the third personality of course is the you know another very brief but very important leader a military autocrat general ziaur rahman general ziaur rahman was of course uh, you know the first person to uh, founder of bangladesh national party the another party one is awami league another is bangladesh national party and he was a military dictator from 1975 to 1981 now uh, ziaur rahman graduated from pakistan military academy and of course and in 1995 joined pakistan army 1971 when the war broke out he was you know he was posted in chittagong hill and he declared that he is on bangladesh side and declared his uh, uh his involvement in that uh, area and he joined freedom fighters that means he was for bangladesh and he was fighting on the part of bangladesh now after that he fled to india and gave repatriation from you know this and 1971 he went back when bangladesh was established and he became one of the leaders there he became deputy chief of the staff of bangladesh army when bangladesh was established deputy chief of staff of bangladesh army and after that uh he started actually having a very unsettled relationship with sheikh mujibur rahman and he made three attempts it is said that he made three attempts of coup and in 1975 he took control and as he assassinated now he appointed himself as bangladesh president in 1977 and in 1978 eight he established bangladesh national party bangladesh national party now he allowed uh he allowed uh, other political parties to resume the work with the political activities and he uh uh he, he was very much you know liked by the uh, super powers because super powers can rule through the dictators very easily and that's why they helped him but in 1981 he was assassinated himself though he assassinated other but he was himself in 1981 now few of the contribution which we should remember to understand his history one he was the person who dismantled industries and favored private enterprises mujibur rahman was for state developed enterprises but this man this mental and uh jawar rahman was for privatization the second he reintroduced islamic elements in politics and promoted the concept of bangladeshi ness bangladeshi ness the difference between two narratives banglaness bangaliness and bangladeshiness is very very important that we can look into the difference bangladeshiness and bangaliness nation as an originating in the language movement in the war of 90s that is bengaliness the language part bangladeshiness is basically entangled into the religion so there are two different aspects we have to look into so this is another vantage point that we should look the fourth personality is begum khalida zia and she married she was married to ziaur rahman we just saw and uh, at the age of 15 itself and she was uh, uh, of course uh, uh, 
in Pakistan when Ziaur Rahman was uh, when Ziaur Rahman had declared itself as independent in Chittagong. After that, she came in 1981 when her husband was assassinated. Khalida Zia became the first vice president of Bangladesh National Party. Now, within years, she spearheaded a resistance movement against the Bangladeshi military dictator. At that time, when she came to power, uh, you know, another military dictator, it was uh, General uh, Irshad, was in power. And she started uh, a movement. And in 1990s, Irshad had to resign and allowed Khalida Zia to actually take into the elections and Khalida Zia became the first woman prime minister of Bangladesh. Khalida Zia became the first woman prime minister of Bangladesh. And she started ruling. Now she has been changing back and with uh, 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 Sheikh Hasina Wazir and uh, no, they are two very important personalities. So, you know, I'm just, I can go on and on giving you these personalities, but if you read a little bit, uh, especially the uh, text, then I think you, it becomes very easy for you to comprehend the history and evolution of Bangladesh. Now, uh, you know, having said that, that how Bangladeshi society has moved from democracy to dictatorship to democracy on the one hand side but on the other hand from secularism to islamic state that is another way that we can comprehend bangladesh okay now for you the another important point for us to understand is the economic development hmm? for develop economic development we can understand now uh, in this economic development for understanding economic development of uh, bangladesh we have to understand the undivided undivided bangladesh when it was in pakistan i think economy very important history of economy in bangladesh is that it is to be understood uh, in terms of the in terms of the undivided Bangladesh. So we have to understand three or four things to understand the economic development in Bangladesh. One, what was the nature of Pakistani society? What was the nature of Pakistani elite? And what was the role of foreign aid? These are interrelated aspects. Now, just to give you a brief, uh, import, a brief of this, to begin with, uh, to understand the nature of Pakistani society and the Pakistani elite, we have to look into for that very important question, whether Pakistan could mobilize internal resources to sustain its economy or not. Pakistan, when was bifurcated from India, they did not have industry. They, they have only agriculture. And therefore, they could not mobilize internal resources for development of independent economy. This also raises a question what were the main characteristics of Pakistani society at that time? Now, if we look into Pakistani society was more of a agriculture dominated society. And because of that, they depended more on foreign aid. Foreign aid. And with the foreign aid, the elites, they had their own whims and fancy for 
mobilization, where will be the industry, who will own the industry, and therefore there was a upper thigh, economic upper thigh for Bangladesh is concerned. Now, after independence, what was the reason, uh, the, what was the nature of Bangladesh economy and why it had to rely on foreign aid and why did foreign aid came so easily to Bangladeshi society? I think that is also important. What was the reason that Bangladesh had to rely on foreign aid and the reliance was so complete that it was declared as a aid propelled state. Aid propelled state, that was the easy. Now another question related to development is foreign aid, the, 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 the emergence of foreign aid and the NGOization of Bangladeshi society. Why did, why did NGOs start emerging in Bangladesh? And for your help, you can underline which are the two most important NGOs which can be analyzed as the outcome of foreign aid. And the answer is actually no marks for that. BARC, B-R-A-C, Bangladesh Rural Advancement Committee. And the second is BARC, B-R-A-C, Bangladesh Rural Advancement Committee. And second, Grameen Bank. What is so important about Grameen Bank. For Clemens, it is village bank. Grameen is rural bank, rural. Grameen is rural. So rural bank, Grameen Bank. And what is so important of Grameen Bank in Bangladesh? That we have to aside. That brings us the question of microcredit. The role of microcredit which of course Grameen Bank supervised, whether that micro credit is only limited to Bangladesh or whether it helped the other countries to take example. And of course, micro credit was taken from Bangladesh. So micro credit is one of the contribution to the world economy world society of Bangladesh, microcredit. Now, another important aspect is that uh, who are, who were the donors of foreign aid? And why did the countries agreed to donate Bangladesh so readily? Why they agreed. Last but not least in there, you can look into what was the quantum of foreign aid to Bangladesh. Now all these, all these sets of questions will help you to understand the developmental model. Developmental model in Bangladesh, which was propelled by foreign aid, and foreign aid, the people, the donors, they were not very much comfortable with the existing bureaucratic setup of the Bangladesh. And that's why they said that they will themselves manage the economic affairs of Bangladesh and that is why NGOs started emerging not only local NGOs, but international, INGOs, Action Aid India type of organization started there. And they started having their own world. So I will come to that uh, point. Now in that, uh, in, in that very context, if you look, the, uh, uh, I think I, uh, did I give you, uh, 
did i give you a uh, you know uh, a reference of the foreign aid text which uh, which i've given you no 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 more okay i will give you later on no problem uh now uh, now this is one aspect the model of development in bangladesh the second aspect which we have to do here that what was the response of what was the response of bangladesh towards process of globalization a very important aspect as far as development is concerned what was the uh, what was the response and in this response we would like to the we would like to look into the responses of various categories various groups of the society at least i would like to highlight you know six or seven uh, groups which were prevalent and which were you know for and against the peasants of the the how, what was the response of the peasants towards globalization what was the response of industrial workers what was the response of business and industrial classes or the left wing academician what was the response of the left academician sir what was the response of the bureaucrats and six what was the response of the political parties especially three political parties awami league bangladesh national party and the left party seven the the role historical authoritarian and undemocratic regimes till mid 90 you know 90 the role they played and last but not the least the democratic government now these these are very important groups which try to either oppose or which try to support the process of globalization in bangladesh okay so uh, we have 10 minutes left in the second uh, you know this uh, uh, so i would like to ask you um, when is the uh, time when you have the time so we can you know arrange another meeting so that you know we can pass way uh, we can at least i think we will have another uh two meetings at a stretch so that we can complete uh at least i want to do three important country one is bangladesh we have you know almost we have done we will do at least economic development this 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 aspect of uh, globalization that part and then i want to do uh, uh um, sri lanka that is another important country in south asia in which ethnic strife and then how they have oscillated between democracy ethnic strife and then democracy how they have uh, actually done this how they have tried to control that is one and what is the meaning of ethnic strife how does it actually challenges the democratic setup of the nation if not controlled how this whole ethnic strife becomes very very dangerous in a particular country and then we come to nepal in which another type of democratic war starts from the people's movement and how they have actually moved from monarchy to democracy and this democracy from monarchy is basically a people's movement while in bhutan democracy was imposed by the king from above so there are different shades in south asia that you have to understand 
and especially people who are dealing with un uh, unpredictable services commission they should understand south asia better mm. because south asia is not very important component of unpredictable services commission so when do you want uh, another class please tell me mm. Mrigank, Vafa. Um, any? I mean, nothing. We don't have anything scheduled as of now. Okay. So uh, no, I think when I, you are relatively free, because you people are at your home and uh, you will be, uh, you can uh, decide. Actually, you are more comfortable because we have to do it now. So. i don't have any problem whenever you say whether it is uh, at any hours actually hmm? so let's do on monday monday what time same time same time same time 12 o'clock yes. 11 o'clock 11 11 yes sir monday 11 o'clock okay so i'll slate that meeting and i'll send you and in the meantime if you have some questions please mail me and i will also actually look how we can reach uh, how we can reach uh, you know uh, how can we get our uh, material uh, scanned and then uploaded huh? in the meantime okay uh, otherwise i will uh, uh, please uh, send me this I, i i will take the emails of everyone so we can make a group and we can send it so far okay anything more would you like to say uh, any questions so, so, i was just asking it is a logistical bit so for some courses uh, we have made google classroom so shall ah. i make a google classroom for this course as well because in by making that we can have all the readings in the one place and also the recordings in that invite will be sent to all in their uh, email and they just have to click the link and they'll be added to I the google to classroom download google uh, classroom this no yeah, no you do you wouldn't have to uh, uh, whoever has a gmail account whoever has uh, a gmail account can easily join that's it uh, okay. nobody I has to jo yeah yeah i i will because actually i was thinking that uh, i'm more comfortable and it gets recorded and it stays with me because if recording is there with everyone will have recording and what will we they do with the recording i don't know hmm? we can upload only the readings that's what like okay. there fine so let's see huh okay hmm. yeah we i will i will okay. let you know okay hmm? all right okay everyone anything anubuti no sir thank you sir it was a very nice lecture oh thank you you have been listening my lectures other way also otherwise also hmm? <laughs> yes sir <laughs> so they are very I, insightful i no uh, i i speak the language of people there i don't speak the classroom language when i am speaking yes, in the sir. public i speak the public language and public language is always communicable more effectively hmm? yes sir, definitely when you are speaking in that side huh? that is different okay all the best take care everyone hmm? thank, thank you, you sir. sir okay thank you so much thank you sir i hope that we would have done it long back hmm?